Telltales. We're gonna talk about what you wanna think about when installing Telltales, what types of Telltales are on the market, um, the different measurements associated with uh, the different sales. So a radial sale, you're gonna place Telltales differently on the sale than you would a full rig sale based on the airflow over the sale. Um, and then, do you want to go with yarn or ribbon? Um, one of the big, big things about uh, ribbon, um, they're fantastic in light wind air. But the problem is, is if you get them wet, they stick to the sail and then they stop doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is telling you where the wind's coming from and how to think about wind direction and if you should tack or fall off the wind and things like that. Um, I went with the cotton version. These are uh, the most recommended. Um, from what I'm hearing, uh, they dry quickly. They don't get hung up on, on anything, really, on the creases of the sail. This pack I got from uh, West Coast Sailing comes with 14 telltales, eight inches long. They come with seven red, seven green, uh, with the adhesive discs on the back. What's really nice about that is if they do get hung up on something, say you capsize and there's another um, you know, boat in the water with you or, or you turtle and it gets hung up, it won't rip the sail. It'll just rip the telltale off the sail and then you can just easily replace it. Um, but we're gonna do two on the starboard side two on the port side um, and show you kind of top down looking down how to install these on a new radial sail. I just bought a radial sail from West Coast Sailing. They do not come with telltales so you have to have to have to order these um, additionally. Um, so yeah let's get started. You definitely have the option of green or red. I'm going to do red on both sides because it's just a little bit more vibrant a little bit more visible to me on the water than green would be um, but totally up to you. And these are great look like the sail honestly and that just goes over the tip so the first thing we want to do is measure now radial full rig and 4.7 are all going to be different measurements because of the size of the sail is different this is a radial sail so we're going to measure 31 up 20 inches in 53 up and 20 inches in so let's do the first one 31 up you want to do it from the foot of the sail and then 21 inches in so let's do 31 up which is here 20 inches in. Just below that crease. I'm going to go ahead and mark that as such. All right, next one's going to be 53 inches up and again 20 inches in. So let's go 53 up from the foot of the sail. Okay. 53 and then we're going to go 20 from there and I'd like to stick along the crease if you could we're going 20 inches in right there it's just above the number we'll go ahead and mark that there there you have it pretty straightforward we're gonna have to do the other side too but you don't want to have them on the same track because you read the telltale from the opposite side. So you definitely want to place them one down or one up um, so they don't overlap. And make sure they're going straight back. And there you go. That's one done. Let's do this one. Make sure the telltale is headed to the back of the sail. Go each. Make sure you got them same as the crease. Let's go ahead and flip the sail over. You're pretty much done with measurements. It's just about going kind of up or down from the measurements you just made. So like we just said, you never want to overlap them. You always want to put them a little bit lower, or a little bit higher, so you can see the one on the other side of the sail. So I think for our purposes, we're going to go just below, just below. And that's it. Uh, Kind of wind indicators and in the, in the separate options you have. So let's let's go see. 
We have two wind indicators here. One is the Little Hawk MK2 wind indicator, which is the original one I purchased. It's a really nice wind indicator. Um, if you're just looking to get something cheap, get something on your boat, this is probably your best source. Um, and then this is your sea vane wind indicator. This is the, uh, the one used by a lot of pros out there. It's phenomenal. Sea vane is meant to um, essentially deflect um, other people's main sheets. At the start of any race, you're gonna find that um, you're gonna be in close quarters with other sailboats. So a lot of times what happens is, is you get snagged up on their main sheets. Um, and this is designed to where that never happens. It just deflects it. Um, so as they come across and it, it pull, it just pulls it right off, which is phenomenal. You may have to readjust it at, at the race, after the race, if it does do that, but at least it won't pull the wind indicator off entirely. Whereas the MK2, it will. If that gets snagged, your SOL. It's gonna yank that off, it's gonna break it, and, and, and you're done. Not only at the start, but I would say at the leeward mark as well, if you're going around um, you know, any of the marks and you have uh, somebody has room on you, um, so you're gonna kinda clip the back end of them, you might get hung up on the back of their main sheet. So something to think about when you're buying wind indicators. I would say the sea vane's the way to go. It's $40, so it's quite expensive, but it's worth it. Um, but it, it's very fragile too. I've had some friends buy it and it broke on them the same day. So if you don't protect it, it will break. It does come with this really nifty uh, tube, if you will, to protect it. Highly recommend you put it in here and keep it in here when you're not using it. Um, but uh, yeah, the sea veins are the way to go. Check the links in the description below if, if you uh, were interested in buying. Again, I got these from West Coast Sailing, uh, but you can pretty much kind of look online. There's seven or eight different people within the Uni United States anyways that will offer this. So. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed that.